buffalo when they came here they just gradually moved all around it was kind of like rotational grazing at its best now that we got lands all fenced off and everything we got to make sure that the cattle never stay at one spot too long and uh, they can constantly move around sort of like it was back when the buffalo were here our grandparents homesteaded this land in 1909 then my father stayed on the place, and then uh, we, the, his sons, uh, took over from there. We're up here at the home place where we grew up at. I guess we started out with a small dairy years ago, and uh, that kind of what kept the uh, food on the table, and now we ended up buying more land, so now we're strictly a cow-calf operation. We actually have two different types of land. Uh, the land that we're on right now is up next to the hills, Black Hills, so it's heavily forested. And then uh, where uh, we run most of the cattle uh, is along the Shine River, and it's mostly uh, open range grasslands down there. Up here, it's all private land, but uh, at our other place, it's a combination of federal land, uh, the Buffalo Gap National Grassland, and uh, also our private land. At our other place, probably two-thirds of it is actually uh, Buffalo Gap National Grassland. So uh, we depend on it quite a bit, and uh, without it, it'd be pretty tough to make it. I think there are benefits to the Forest Service. Of course, we pay for it, for one thing. We're one of the few people that use federal land that actually pay. It's a way of uh, keeping the grass uh, in check and uh, for it doesn't get too long and tall where it, it could be a prairie fire someday. It's also uh, improving the grass. So I think there's a real benefit to the Forest Service and they realize it too. But they have to look out for everybody and they're looking out for the, the people who like to um, see the wildlife and uh, also um, people that like to go rock hunting and things like that. So. There are some challenges uh, to managing land that's intermingled with the Forest Service, but as a whole, it's worked out well for us. Forest Service allows us to uh, drive in and check cattle fix fences, and uh, do about anything we need to repair. We kind of look at it as our land. Uh, we treat it just the way we treat our own private land. I guess we want to leave it better than when we took over. And uh, we want to see more western wheat, wheat grass come in, uh, green needle. We want to see that uh, grass, it's uh, thicker and more vigorous. and kind of replacing a lot of that buffalo grass and uh, just getting a better grass cover all around. The long-term plan for the forest area is that we still have a lot more ground up here that needs to be thin. I suppose years down the line, uh, Bob and I won't see it, but uh, it does open it up for uh, more growth. Uh, there could be logging later on, but right now that's not in the plans. When we acquired the land, we got the, the allotment permit, so that allowed us so many uh, AUMs to graze there. Uh, some of the land, though, is woody draws, so, um, and they've kind of, in the last 20 years, have really stressed that, that they want cattle off of that land. Be, oh, after, after June 1st, and we can't be back on till October 1st just mainly for the bushes and the trees and things like that. But it has worked out. We've been able to work around that just fine. It's not been a problem. Kind of saves those areas for winter grazing. So uh, it uh, probably beneficial to the environment plus for us too. So uh, it's also got good protection, which is a big plus on that. Well, we have about 30 different pastures. Um, I wouldn't say we are true rotational grazers. You talk to those people and they move their cattle every week and uh, if they don't have it grazed out completely, you either got your pastures too big or you don't have enough cattle. 
We try not to stay in a pasture more than a month long. Uh, we try to move out so the plants do have a chance to come back. Now this land right here, we'll probably only graze it two months out of the year, maybe even less, maybe a month. This pasture here, and then we'll move to other pastures. Uh, then we'll be out of it for the next year. Our goal for grazing is to always leave grass. We love grass. Uh, I like looking out on a pasture that looks good even after we take cattle off. And we do have a problem down there because we're in the pure shale and it doesn't take any abuse. Uh, that's one of our uh, main concerns is we don't dare overgraze on that type of ground. We've always tried to leave a little bit of grass behind, whether it just be half or even more than half. And uh, I think that has probably given us the best sustainability to, to get through uh, a drought. Well, I think the first thing we did was we probably uh, developed our water system. So we had water tanks in every pasture. The cows didn't have to travel. Fortunately, around here, we already had the fences in place, so it was a matter of just, you know, moving the cows from one pasture to another. Uh, other places, we did have to uh, put in some fencing. Pipelines uh, have definitely given us uh, a security, but it uh, also at uh, distribution of the cattle, and it has also allowed us to fence off the riparian areas and that uh, uh, keeping those cattle off the summer off uh, on the river that we've seen a real improvement there. You have to take care of the land or it won't take care of you and that also goes for your cattle. Well I don't know if I can speak for Dustin and Bob but I pretty much uh, like everything I do except I don't like to have to make money at it. If I didn't have to make money at it, it'd be fun.